Welcome back to Mario and Luigi, Bowser's Inside Story. Today, we're gonna get inside Bowser's head. It's actually in the correct spot. For once. Bowser's thinking too hard and just gave himself an aneurysm, but uh, that's, that's probably okay. Take the Metroid elevator down into Bowser's VHS collection. I think we finally found a mate for Starlo. Alright, kid, don't blow it. Ah, oh, you screwed up. Personal space, man. Bowser's brain librarian does not respect your personal space or your privacy. It also just doesn't care about Luigi, apparently. Eh. It's Luigi. Apparently we're very, very large viruses. Oh, we broke it. I do like that Mario and Luigi are freaking out right now, but Starlo just doesn't care. Too much crazy stuff has happened. She's just so used to this by now. Just desensitized to all the crazy. We got our next boss right off the bat. Bowser Memory ML. I will refer to the boss as M and L. Just for clarity's sake. A more traditional boss again. But they're also supposed to be evocative of very classic Mario Brothers. It's not much of a gimmick to this fight other than one little thing with L. It's gonna get really confusing, isn't it? I'm going to try and keep it straight. And the first attack is he gets a superstar. In this little remix of the classic Mario invincibility music. And he will charge right to left in a straight line unless a coin appears, in which case he will go for the coin every time. This may also cause him to jump over you, so if you try and jump at that point, you'll get it in the face. One small mercy is that if you get hit by it, that character gets knocked off the screen and can't be hit anymore. Luigi's a coward. If you hit him twice, he will run away for a little bit. Yeah, I screwed up. M's other attack is he subbonds colored bricks and jumps and hits them into the color-coded brother. He also does a different jump for each one. A regular jump will hit Mario and a spin jump will hit Luigi. Generally, the tactic for this fight is you're going to want to just keep scaring Luigi away, because he can also heal both of them. In the meantime, giving you time to pound on M. Got a little tired of using the uh, bouncy ball. The barrels are about the same power. They cost the same number of SP, at least. And it's easier to get excellent with them, and it's also easier to edit. Hey, L comes back and shows off his first attack. He tries to hit you with a hammer and then just trips and launches in the air. His first couple hesitant steps will lead you towards which brother it hits. I love how even though it, like, formed these replicas of them, it has, like, a little pogo leg for some reason. Well, it turns out Bowser just has really terrible vision. And this is all he can see of them. And l has gone again. He does have one more attack, which we'll see later. Yeah. 
actually had intended to do a little grinding before this battle to make it go a little faster. But it turns out that any time an area inside Bowser is reacting, you do not have the option to go outside. Starla will stop you. Ten minutes of cannons later. M's already down. Which does instantly bring L back. Take some pot shots at him. He just keeps looking back. He's ready to run. At least attacking him does reset the animation, so he's not just clearly ignoring us. And his other attack. He will get chased by a boo. L will always jump over you, and the boo will never jump over you, so you just have to keep an eye on which direction he's heading. When he goes off the screen, he can come back on either the top or the bottom. Seems like there's a little bit of a delay if he's going to come back on the same side, so you can use that as an indicator. But as long as you're paying attention, there is enough time to dodge appropriately. Or, you, again, you can just jump with both brothers to be cheap. It's insurance. That's never cheap. And he, of course, does the one most annoying thing in all RPG battles brings another enemy back to life. Thankfully only with 70-ish health. Pretty easy to deal with, since you can just scare him off again. You can scare him off, knock him down, and then... Uh-oh. And so those blocks can also make you dizzy, if you screw up. Seems like the timing on them is pretty tight. It's just one of the many challenges I face with the way I'm recording. Kind of have to mentally build in the travel time between the two screens. All these attacks are obviously supposed to be kind of minor references to classic Mario games. Obviously the M and L are super pixelated versions of already pixelated characters. It'd be kind of interesting if they gave them the uh, old school colors. Like the old, uh, like the old green and white. Yeah, and Mario was like red and brown almost. That's uh, just because the old NES color palette can only take so much at one time. Yeah. All in all, this fight is very manageable compared to some previous ones. Yeah, it doesn't seem that bad. I mean, when M does the invincibility thing, like you said, it knocks you off the screen if you get hit, so you can't get multiple hit by it. And even that one hit it does didn't do that much damage to you. It only does in the 20s, and the bricks only do about 15. Though I am wondering where the 8-bit turtle and ghost are coming from. Yeah, I mean, probably just related memories. M&L are the antivirus program in Bowser's brain. We had some other antivirus precautions in place that turn into those things. I mean, if Mario and Luigi have to fight Koopas and Boos, then maybe having them appear would help fight them off as well? Oh, it's like a training program. Those are virus updates that needed to be done. See, Bowser? That's why you don't buy McAfee for your brain. I do like that. To defend Bowser, it went to 
Mario and Luigi's memories. Yep. Because that's the most powerful thing Bowser can think of. Mm-hmm. That would explain why Bowser keeps getting beaten. If he can only remember a handful of attacks for each of them. That's true. There's no fire attacks or anything, so maybe every time Mario whips out the fireballs, Bowser's like, Oh crap! What's going on? I don't remember this! I wasn't ready! Bowser has... Koopa Alzheimer's, I guess. It's actually very tragic. Now the antivirus is defeated, it turns into the Bowser Memory P, which is a hyperpixelated Princess Peach, because that is Bowser's most precious memory. Isn't that sweet? Steak. Princess. That steak really had nothing to do with anything, did it? It's a very important memory for Bowser. It's a very realistic looking steak compared to the rest of the game. So it hasn't been that long since we had him chub out. So, I bet you thought the minigames couldn't get any worse. Well, you're wrong. Now we have to do a puzzle. Everybody loves puzzles, right? If by everyone you mean like six year olds. <laughs> old people? Maybe there'll be so much tutorializing that they'll just do the puzzle for you. <laughs> They almost did that in one of the minigames before. The tutorial was the first round of the minigame. I mean, they showed you the first two pieces. And I still get it wrong. So this is actually sped up double speed. Because I have some respect for your time. But since you're watching this only a little bit. There are actually more puzzles in the game, and I will just completely cut those out and skip to the finished product. At least it does that thing where, like, if you put it in the right spot, it just sets it in place, even if you have no basis for knowing that that's where it goes. Considering the fact you do have to spin them, and there is no key, you have no idea what this looks like until you're done. It is the least they could do. While you're watching this, just think of me a little bit, having to do this multiple times for recordings and test runs, and having to do a bunch more of these. That's a rather impressive safe code for just a single rotary dial. It's made with special Koopa engineering. We are finally done with that. Just slot it back into place. Maybe it was actually a really long, really big lock, and that was actually just three digits. It was three, like, each row is one turn. There's like 10,000 different numbers on the dial. Yes. Apparently he's got a little song to go with his opening the safe. Well, he spins it really fast then, but hey, Starkier was actually in there. And Bowser actually gets the second Starkier. Yeah. It, it, it's his. Pretty impressive. Ooh, something else in there. Maybe it's a new special attack? Or, guys, what are you... What are you doing? I think gullible's written on the back of the safe. Oh, you son of a... That's right. 
They betrayed us. They are in Fawful's pay. Our only friends. Bowser is now completely alone. He's not completely alone. He's got Chippy to keep him company. Oh joy. Oh, that, that might be worse. Adding to the list of reasons that minions might be loyal to Fawful, we have food. Yeah, could see that. Which, granted, I'm in for the free food loyalty program. I, I want to see each of those guys get fattened up by the super fat food. <laughs> yes, they all just get to pick over the leftovers. Can we take a moment to discuss how horrifying this actually is? We can see into the safe, but for Bowser it's pitch black. It's barely bigger than him. He knows he's locked in there and nobody who cares knows where he is. I mean, we joked about it, but really, Chippy is the only person who knows where he is. Yep. So, you know, while you're laughing at Bowser's plight, just, just think about being in there yourself. Maybe while he's acting so irrationally. Sure. Just eat it. That's what they're for. Bowser eats when he's sad. There was no ice cream, so he resorted to eating the star cure. Yes. Thankfully he went down the auxiliary star cure pipe and didn't end up back in his stomach. Yahoo! So we just... we get it. I... I, I don't want it. No, I'm gonna be... okay, okay. Okay, yeah, let's go. Ugh. I think they should wash it really well now. Yeah, and it it's just dripping on Mario, it's all over him. Oh god. Luigi's just... Do, Luigi, stop it. Calm down, Luigi. He's really excited. We are two-thirds of the way done with MacGuffin Quest. Bowser's out of commission now, though, so let's head back into the real world. The resident soothsayer slash medical professional will know where to go next. But I still love these guys. Just look at them wiggle. Someone really needs to do something about that red toad. I don't want to bother him. He's freaking out in a hospital. It's probably... I don't think there's anything that we can do about that one. Oh, did, did we interrupt your personal time? Sorry. We have the location of our next dark here. It's on the beach. Didn't Bowser get the second one from some guy on the beach? Doesn't seem very safe to have two of them so close together. Yeah, well... They just had an intern distribute them around the world to sages, and it's... It was one of those things where the faster he finished, the faster he could go home, and... The football game was on that night, and he was meeting his friends for a beer, and... Wanted to be done for the day. Those guys aren't even real sages, are they? Listen, he found three guys with unique sprites, at least, okay? Alright, that, that is pretty impressive, I guess. The third st sage is on top of a cliff, so obviously we need our lung capacity checked. You do actually have to blow into the microphone for this part. Mario is fine. Luigi... Eh, not so much. Alright, come on. Another go. Uh, I think that part's scripted. You broke it, Luigi. 
Why doesn't the exhaust pipe just vent outside or into the air? It's just people breathing out. Nope, it's connected to the ventilation. It makes perfect sense. What, like a fan Luigi spun or something that is going nuts? I guess. Well, the doctor doesn't want to talk to us anymore. Let's just leave. Oh, man, you just... One person with good lung capacity and this place just falls apart. Birds flying everywhere. Talking birds. So the bird locked the door and stole the key? That is a talented bird. You might have seen a couple of these pipes out in the world before. Unlike previous games, they are not full of water. They are full of air. Mario's very impulsive. He just sees that thing spewing air and the first thing he thinks is, Oh, let me just suck on that for a while. <laughs> Let's think about this one for a moment. I'm going to assume that at least Earth chemistry is existent in the Mario and Luigi universe. It's a pretty poor assumption. Just work with me on this. <laughs> okay. For Mario to be inhaling this and become lighter, that means it has to be lighter than air. Which means it's probably helium. Or hydrogen. Let's hope it's not hydrogen. Mario is just taking a lungful of pure helium and holding it in. Also, if that's all shooting out because Luigi exhaled too hard, does that mean that Luigi was exhaling helium? Or the vents were underground and this is some sort of bizarre fracking operation? And Mushroom Kingdom is sitting on a vast supply of trapped helium? Maybe. Ooh, maybe it is hydrogen, then they can use it for power. The hospital's just a front. For an illegal gas mining operation? Yup. The, uh, the, the mole bros are totally under there doing all the fracking. Well, now that we've unearthed that horrible conspiracy, let's find out what's wrong with this guy. He's actually an in-game hint system. He tells you where optional special attacks are. Makes you wonder, since he can, since he's looking for special attack pieces, can he use special attacks? Maybe. Maybe he was looking for them for you. But then, the rest of the toad population, he just found a random mushroom and ate it. Which is odd, because they knew it was called a blank mushroom, so they knew what it was and what it did, and he ate it anyway. Yep. I'm not sure these people are worth saving. So your hint system is a traumatized adventurer. Great. Hey. We've already got the fortune teller covered, so we had to go with something. So we haven't been in this room before. Oh my god, I love this place. Look at them all wiggling. Oh my god, they're all wiggling. And the first one you talk to actually likes Luigi. But again, they ascribe medical knowledge to us that we just do not have. Though I realize, and thankfully so, apparently the Blorbs also make their clothes grow. Not all the way, but enough that there weren't a bunch of fat, naked toads rolling around. Maybe their clothes are, like, all made out of elastic. It's this little hole in the wall. Let me slide in. And there's some stuff. Get the DX POW gloves. Those give you a 20% boost to POW. It's a pretty good boost. We also got the... I believe we got the grown-up wear from M&L. 
which is a pretty nice stat boost all around. Join us next time for more Mario and Luigi.